This red-eyed tree frog really gets the jump on traveling. One minute it's there, the next it's soaring into space. The only way to appreciate this disappearing act is to look at it in super slow motion. This frog's body is merely two inches. Its legs take up almost a quarter of its mass and more than half its length. Even so, the muscles in its hind limbs are not nearly strong enough to produce the big leaps this frog is known for. So how does it do it? As the frog readies itself to vault, the leg muscles contract quickly pulling on the tendons like an archer's bowstring. As the tendons stretch, they gather elastic energy. When the frog jumps, the tendons release their energy, launching the frog like an arrow from the bow. The tendons wrap around the frog's ankles. When they snap back, the pull causes the frog's feet to extend and lift off the ground. The extreme and unusual elasticity of the tendons is the key to this frog's mighty jumps. They add seven times more power to the hop, enough to cover more than three feet in a single leap. That's 20 times its body length. A human would have to vault the length of three buses from a standing leap to match its skills. For a tree dweller, long jumps have a downside. If the frog bounces when it lands, well, it could be a long way down. Thankfully, its feet are made to hold on for dear life. Soft like rubber, they mold to uneven surfaces. The toe pads are covered with tiny pillar structures that generate friction to increase the frog's grip. But the key to their gravity-defying feats lies between these columns. An adhesive mucus strong enough to hold up to 14 times the animal's body weight. A little reassurance for a tiny frog taking a leap of faith. Look at most lists of the internet's favorite animals. It's a good bet you'll find red pandas somewhere near the top. And it's easy to see why. Here are a few fun facts about the absolutely adorable red panda. Winning nickname. The Chinese name for the red panda is Hun Ho, which translates to Firefox. Yep, just like the web browser. Family ties? If you thought the red panda was a close cousin of the more familiar black and white panda, think again. Red pandas and giant pandas shared an ancestor roughly 40 million years ago. But today, they're far different creatures. Giant pandas are the distant relatives of bears, while red pandas are more closely related to ferrets. After much debate, are they raccoons? Are they bears? The scientific community has assigned red pandas their own family name, Alourde. Origin story. Red pandas were discovered in 1825, almost half a century before the first giant pandas were spotted. They're often referred to as the lesser panda, but now that just doesn't seem fair. Red and giant pandas do share a couple unique things in common. For one, they both have what are known as pseudothumbs, a modified wrist bone they use to grab onto tree branches and bamboo. Which brings us to the other thing the pandas share, the bamboo diet. In Nepal, the word panda loosely translates to eater of bamboo. While they're technically classified as carnivores, bamboo leaves make up 95% of the red panda's diet. They need to eat about 20 to 30% of their own body weight each day, so every once in a while they might snack on lizards, bird eggs, or fruit. But for the most part, they're made of bamboo. Big on nap time. Red pandas sleep about 55% of the day away. What a luxury. Daredevils. When they're not sleeping, they're actually pretty adventurous. When climbing down trees, they do so head first. Their tails help with balance, and those semi-retractable claws on their paws grip tight to the trees. Whoa, fearless. 
on the brink. We're not exactly sure how many red pandas are left, but we know there aren't many. Recent estimates list the population as high as 10,000 members and as low as 2,500. Deforestation, illegal trade, and climate change are threatening to make red pandas disappear from our world by 2065, if not earlier. A world without these fluffy, fiery furballs? Nope, no thanks. Red pandas deserve better. Let's give it to them. Meet the red colobus monkey, also known by locals as the poisonous monkey. Mm, wait, come again? Poison monkeys? But how? Islanders once believed that when these guys feed in an area, plants and crops die. So what's the story behind this thinking? You see, locals were finding that trees eaten by these monkeys were dying out. And what's worse, having a reputation as crop killers has led to farmers taking these monkeys out. It's a huge reason why they're critically endangered, with less than 2,000 left on this island. But are these fun little creatures really the notorious forest destroyers they've been made out to be? Let's explore. You see, the red colobus monkeys hold crazy toxic and gassy substances in their stomachs. Why is that? Well, they happen to be sugar intolerant. No sweets! Since their diet won't allow fully ripe fruits, their guts are designed to go through a pre-digestion fermentation process in the stomach. They've clearly got a thorough food processing system at work. But when they eat from non-native sources, like this breadfruit tree, that system gets irritated. The alien leaves give them indigestion. Ugh. But the older monkeys of the troop have discovered a way to work with this. They've learned to eat charcoals, the remnants of old fires found nearby. The charcoal works by absorbing toxins called phenolics, which are found in some leaves. Doing away with these nasty phenolics allows digestion to run smoothly. Yeah, we're not the only ones who figured out charcoal's pretty dope. The monkeys have become great at bypassing problematic toxins, but their preference is to eat coconuts. They crave the ones that aren't yet ripe, but still contain some nutrients without the sugars. See, they devour the goods and let go of the not so goods. It may appear wasteful, but this actually results in more coconut trees growing, nature at its finest. So as you can see, the monkeys are not poisonous, they're not tree killers, nah. In fact, they are beings that help produce foods aplenty. And because of them, while some trees do get stripped, the forest as a whole thrives. And over time, the locals have since learned the true nature of the monkeys. To the well-informed, they're no longer seen as enemies, but instead, as a blessing. Dear Black Mamba, we all know your name. Your reputation precedes you. Your legend, all fame. You slither on rocks, you hop between trees, you've got a ton of talent. That's easy to see. But what do they know of you really, dear friend? Behind the external, the reality, no pretend. Let's explore a few cool things that you can do. To dispel all those fears, maybe win some admiration too. So why do they call you Black Mamba anyway? Your scales are not black, they're more dark gray. Ah, there it is. When you open your mouth, it's black as the night. Why is it black? Scientists aren't sure. Most think to deter opponents, the opposite of allure. But how could that be if you're highly aggressive, a revenge-seeking villain, striking repeatedly when threatened? Therein lies the key. You'll fight if you have to. But if the powers that be challenge you to a quarrel, a face-off is necessary. It's part of the struggle. That bite of yours is awful. The deadliest of kinds. Just two drops of that venom sends razor blades through the mind. And when you get angry, you can unleash ten times that dose. 
In just 45 minutes, a grown man will be toast. When the toxins take full effect, the heart attack comes next. They should have known better than to mess with such a foe. You're not down to fight, but you'll wreak havoc for show. Hey, Black Mamba, can we pause your tale for a sec? There's someone else to introduce. You all may not have heard of her yet. The Green Mamba, so bright and so green. She's not as well known, but she too can play mean. A loner herself, she doesn't look to tangle. But when she's in need of a meal, hey, we all get angry. See these monkeys and trees? They're totally unaware. And when it comes to her prey, she specializes in scare. Typically dining on birds, eggs, and rats. Right now, craving a little white monkey is where she's at. Her bite is fierce. The venom spreads fast. In a matter of minutes, taking a breath might be one's last. A tale of two mambas, their mentality the same. Their life, just like ours, is so much more than a game. The mythical black mamba. There's no forgetting that name. But when you think of him, don't get it twisted. And may his legend forever reign.